Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to my channel. This is a continuation of the series that we're doing, Where Did the Bible Come From? How did we get the Bible? In the last video, we looked at the work of the Masoretes, from which we get, should I say, from whom we got the Masoretic text, which is the basis of our modern day Old Testament. And uh, very interesting, fascinating, fascinating how God has preserved his word through the amazing work of the Masoretes who copied meticulously the, um, the manuscripts of the Old Testament for 500 years. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the texts and manuscripts of the New Testament. Now, I want to do uh, an introduction to the New Testament manuscripts, but let me just say in this video, we can only ever scratch the surface. So I'm really just sharing thoughts for you to go off and do your own uh, research, your own investigation. Now, the, it has to be said that there are no original autographs of the Old Testament. That means the original writings, the original um, parchment or manuscripts that were written down. The, uh, the New Testament books were written in the latter half of the first century AD. Soon after the books were written, the original autographs perished for one reason or another. But God has preserved his word through copies of the New Testament called manuscripts, all written in Greek. Greek was as it were, the world language of the time, as English is today. So if we um, do a small comparison between the Old Testament and the New Testament manuscript evidence, the integrity and accuracy of the Old Testament text is largely the result of the extreme care taken by the rabbinical scholars in the transmission process as we saw in the last video, the Masoretes and others like them. Though very few Old Testament manuscripts are known, we know that they are of very high quality. And we, again, we looked at those in the last couple of videos. The reliability of the New Testament text, however, rests on a different basis, the vast multitude of existing manuscripts. So what are the number of the manuscripts? Let's have a look, shall we? The number of the New Testament manuscripts written in Greek between the 2nd and 15th centuries that we currently possess is 5,366. Now, because of this vast number of manuscripts, the New Testament is undoubtedly the best attested book from the ancient world. And um, let's have a look at briefly about the, uh, the grouping of manuscripts. Now, most manuscripts do not contain the entire New Testament because, because a hand-produced copy of the whole New Testament was too bulky for practical use. Imagine trying to carry that under your arm or in your bag. So there were four categories um, which were generally followed when making copies of the New Testament. Firstly, they copied the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They copied the book of Acts and the general epistles. They copied the Pauline epistles, that is the epistles written by the Apostle Paul. And they copied the book of Revelation. Now, what are the types of manuscripts? What are they written on? New Testament manuscripts are made up of three uh, major types. Firstly, there's papyrus. Many of the earliest witnesses to the New Testament were written on papyrus material. This was the material that the New Testament was written on in the main. Then we've got the uncials. Now, the the manuscripts of this group are the earliest and most important. Unsealed mans manuscripts were written with all capital letters and no spaces between letters. 
Now there are 362 unsealed manuscripts in existence today. Then there's what's known as minuscule, not minuscule, but minuscule or cursives. The minuscule script was a development of a cursive hand and differs from unicels by its use of smaller forms of letters. The small letters could be written more quickly and required less space. Now, these minuscules did not make their debut until the 9th century and thus really and truly are of less value to the theologians, of course, and scholars because of their dates. But of course, they're highly valuable to the ordinary person. So let's look at what are the important New Testament manuscripts. Let's have a look at the uh, U unseal manuscripts on papyrus which were written between the second and third centuries. There are 88 papyri manuscripts of portions of the New Testament. These very early and important witnesses of the New Testament include most of the New Testament. Now the following, following are the more significant um, papyri witnesses. Now they're numbered uh, P and then a letter. These are obviously all in um, theological centres or museums or places of study. Um, so firstly there's what's known as P52 written between AD 110 and 125. Now according to most scholars the closest copy to an autograph, that is the original writing, is a papyrus manuscript designated P52, dated around, as I've just said, 110 to 125 AD, containing a few verses of John chapter 18, that is 30, verses 31 to 34 and 37 to 38. Now, this fragment was only 20 to 30 years removed from the autograph, was part of one of the earliest copies of John's Gospel. And we get that from Philip W. Comfort's book, Texts and Manuscripts of the New Testament in the Origin of the Bible, page 179. Now, it should also be noted that P52 confirms the traditional belief that the Gospel of John was written before the end of the first century AD. Then we have, secondly, we have P87 written around 125 AD. Now this contains a few verses of the book of Philemon and thirdly we have P77 written around 150 AD and this contains a few verses of the book of Matthew chapter 23. Then we have P32 written around 175 AD and this has portions of the book of Titus 1 and 2 and uh, Fifthly, we have P45 written in the late second century, and this contains portions of all four Gospels and the Book of Acts. Then we have P46 written around 200 AD, has almost all of Paul's epistles and the Book of Hebrews. Then there's P47 written in the third century AD, and that contains the Book of Revelations chapters 9 to 17. Then there's P66 written around 175 AD. One of the earliest witnesses to the New Testament is this almost complete copy of the Gospel of John. Then there's P72 again written around the 3rd century. It's the earliest copy which includes Jude and 1 and 2 Peter. And then there's P75 written between around between 175 and 225 AD. Now this contains large portions of Luke chapter 3 through to John chapter 15. So there's quite a few there. So then we come to the unseal manuscripts written on vellum and parchment written between the 4th and 9th centuries AD. The most important manuscripts 
of the New Testament are the great anti or codices. Codices is a Greek word for a book that date from the fourth and following centuries onwards. There's the um, Codex Vaticanus, also known as B, uh, written between 325 and 350 AD. This fourth century manuscript is widely acknowledged as being the most important witness on the New Testament text. This manuscript has been in the Vatican Library in Rome since 1481, but its contents were not made available for all until 1889. Now, it's rare in that it contains, in Greek, practically all of the Old and New Testaments. It does not include the pastoral epistles and Hebrews um, chapter 9 verse 15 to Revelation. In spite of its gaps, it is considered to be the most exact copy of the New Testament known. And printed texts of the Greek New Testament today rely heavily on the Codex Vaticanus. Then there's the uh, Codex Codex Sinaiticus, also known as Aleph, uh, written around 340 AD. The Codex Sinaiticus is of near equal value to Codex Vaticanus and is also an important witness to the New Testament text because of its age, accuracy and completeness. It is known as the Codex Sinaiticus because it was discovered by the great textual critic Constantine Tischendorf of St. Catherine's Monastery in Mount Sinai in 1844. Very interesting story here. Tischendorf first um, discovered Sinaiticus while stumbling upon portions of it in a wastebasket that was awaiting destruction by fire. Codex Sinaiticus contains over half of the Old Testament and all of the New Testament except for Mark chapter 16 verses 9 to 20 and the book of John chapter 7 uh, 53, verse 53 to chapter 8 verse 11. Now it's again it, it's to me it's a sure sign that God has preserved his word because this man came across it by accident when it was, as it were, in a waste paper basket ready to be burnt. So God has preserved his word. Now, it has to be said that the, the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus rank as the two most important manuscript witnesses to the New Testament. Then there's the Codex Alexandrinus, also known as A, written around uh, 450 AD. This Alexandrian manuscript, composed by scribes in Alexandria, Egypt, ranks second only to Vaticanius and Sinaiticus as a superior New Testament witness. It is a near complete manuscript of the Bible with very little missing except for portions from Matthew, John, and the book of 2 Corinthians. Codex Alexandrinus was originally going to be offered as a gift to King James of England, but since James died before he received it, it was presented to his successors, Charles I, in 1627. Now, it was too late to uh, be of help to the translators of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. I wonder how different it would have been if they'd had that available to them at the time. So then there's the Codex Ephra Me Recip Rescriptus, also known as C, um, written around 345 AD. This document is a what's called a palimpsest, a manuscript in which the original writing has been erased and written over. Now through chemicals and hard work 
the original writing underneath can be read. Uh, it has material from every book of the New Testament except the book of 2 Thessalonians and the book of 2 John. Now its age makes it a very, very valuable witness and it was not until 1845 that a full edition of this manuscript was published. Then fifthly we have the Codex Bezai, also known as D, written, they're not quite sure, somewhere between 450 or 550 AD. Now this is the earliest known biblical copy in two languages, Greek and Latin. It contains the Gospels and the Book of Acts with a very small section of the Book of 3 John in Latin. Now it has to be noted that of these, very, of these five very important manuscripts, only one, the Codex Beze, which we've just talked about, was available to the translators of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Now revised versions of the Bible today are based on these earlier and better manuscripts. Praise the Lord for that. So then we have, we come to the, uh, the minuscule manuscripts between the 9th and 15th centuries AD. Now because of their late dates, uh, minuscule manuscripts do not possess the high quality of the earlier uncials. These uh, minuscule manuscripts, though, make up the majority of New Testament manuscripts. There are 2,795 manuscripts and 1,964 lectionaries in minuscule script. Now compare that with 362 manuscripts and 245 lectionaries in unsealed script. So let's have a look briefly at uh, other New Testament witnesses. Now, of course, there's the, the, the lectionaries, as I've just mentioned. Now, a, lecture, a lectionary is a manuscript arranged in sections for the purpose of being read in a public worship service. Most uh, lectionaries are of the Gospels, but some include the Book of Acts and the Epistles. 2,200 lectionaries have been discovered. Now they were used in the early church. They were um, scripture which they were they they had certain parts of scripture which they'd read on, on certain uh, Sundays, certain times of the year, and they based the idea on the Jewish idea of reading certain parts of scripture at certain parts of the year. So let's have a look at the versions of. Um, the, uh, the New Testament. As the New Testament message spread, it was translated into other languages. Firstly, there was the Old Syriac version. This translation of the New Testament was in circulation in Syria around 400 AD. And we get that information from Geisler and Nick's book uh, on page 292. Then there's, secondly, there's the Old Latin version. The Old Latin version was translated around 150 AD and it served as the Bible of the Western Church. And uh, Lightfoot says in his book, some of the Old Latin copies are as old as the celebrated uh, Vaticanus and Sinaitic manuscripts. The Old Latin is by far the most important of the Latin versions because it reaches back very close to the time when the last books of the New Testament were written. Thirdly, there's the Peshitta. This Syriac translation has been in use since the 5th century. Then there's the Latin Vulgate, which probably most of us have heard about. Now, this work began by Jerome in uh, 384 AD, became the standard Bible for more than a thousand years 
and it was actually made the official Bible of the Roman Catholic Church. Then uh, the other witnesses to the New Testament are the early Christian writers. Now many volumes of literature exist from the era of the early church and the early church fathers. Many of their writings are filled with quotations from the New Testament. Now as um, Lightfoot said, these men possess copies of the New Testament which are older than our manuscripts today. As Bruce Metzger says, so extensive, and he's quoting, quote, quoting someone else here, so extensive are these citations that if all other sources for our knowledge of the text of the New Testament were destroyed, they would be sufficient alone in reconstructing practically the entire New Testament. Praise the Lord for that. So we can have uh, confidence that the Bible we have in our hands today, particularly the New Testament, we've already seen the Old Testament, we can have confidence in the Old Testament. We can have confidence that the New Testament is the authoritative, error-free, written, inspired word of God that God has preserved down through the centuries through uh, men, of, men of God who he has as it were, commissioned to um, preserve his word. So I want to thank you for joining me in this video. Next video, we're going to be looking at what's known as textual criticism, which is an awesome subject in and of itself. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.